I control time. Ever wonder if you can get that cinematic look with the free version of DaVinci Resolve? Well, today, I'll show you how. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to dive into something that's close to my heart and to every filmmaker's heart. And that's creating that cinematic film look. And the best part about everything, we're going to achieve it using the free version of DaVinci Resolve with absolutely no plugins. All right, so we are in DaVinci Resolve, the free version here in uh, the color page. And right when you notice this, we do have our first shot pulled up here. Just to let you guys know, there is some limitations when it comes to creating this. And one of them is, you know, no noise reduction, which is fine. You know, there is external plugins that you can use for noise reduction if you need them. So we're gonna go down here to our settings. We're in 1920 by 1080. We're gonna go to color management. We want to set our timeline color space for our computer readout saying, hey, I want this to be working in DaVinci Wide Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate. Our output color space is our monitor and what our monitor is reading. So we're going to put this in Rec. 709, Gamma 2.4. And our lookup table, we got to make sure that this is in tetrahedral. And we're going to say make broadcasts. Oh, excuse me. Make broadcast safe. Okay. We're going to press save. All right. Now, if you do shoot on the Pocket Cinema or the Ursa or the Pixis that's coming out, which everyone is excited for. Um, if you shoot in B-Raw, it does have some very awesome benefits uh, and one of them is that you can change the color space and the gamma in the raw card to davinci wide gamut davinci intermediate and what this does is that it just eliminates one of the cst's that you're going to have to put in to create this look properly and i'll show you guys what i mean okay so this properly converts it to the davinci wide gamut davinci intermediate we are at ISO 400, color space 5600 Kelvin, which is daylight. To achieve this, we're going we're gonna to make it as simple as possible, okay? So, we're going to go ahead and create a few nodes. We're going to say, we're going to use this one. Seeing that we can't use noise, noise reduction, we'll use this one for our highlights. So, once I click A, it's going to allow me to label these. So, we're going to say highlights, Okay. And I'm going to put that before our CST. Now, I know that these nodes can be kind of scary <laughs> because there's a lot happening. But I want you guys to think about it as like an appliance itself, okay? This here is going to be your startup node, right? It's your, your beginning node in the layer system. Think of this like the outlet or the socket uh, that you're plugging into, okay? And then we're going to go ahead and create Let's do two more nodes. I'm going to try to keep this as organized as possible and create some more space. This one's going to be our corrector. If I can spell. Okay, correct is fine. This one's going to be our look. Now we're just going to create a CST, and you'll see why that we have to have a CST at the end here. And then our luck. With this being in DaVinci Wide Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate, we're not going to have to use this node here, okay? Because it's already in the DaVinci Wide Gamut color space. And I absolutely love working in this color space. But if we didn't, then we'd have to put a CST here. Now, CSTs or color space transforms are readily available in both the free and also the studio version. You just come down here to Resolve F FX Color, and you go to Color Space Transform. You click on this node, now you're going to see a lot of drop-down windows, right? Input Color Space, Output Color Space. So, your input color space is what your camera is reading out, which, what is it? It's DaVinci Wide Gamut. So, we're going to go ahead and put this as DaVinci Wide Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate, our output color space is what we're going to have our final output to be, right? Rec. 7 and I, Gamma 2.4. Okay? We're going to find a good 
framing to actually shoot. I need something in focus, probably like right there. That would be perfect. And then on our tone mapping, I always check, use custom max input and put it at 10,000 nits, okay? On our corrector node, what I'm going to end up doing is we're going to right click. And if you're on a Mac, you press control and you're going to go down to gamma and you're going to click linear. I love working on a linear color space because here's the reason. It makes it so easy to shot match. Okay, so now this is our balance corrector. We could do everything in the raw card, but we're going to do it here node style here, okay? That's what I typically do. I hardly ever touch all the raw card stuff. Now working on the corrector node, let's first work on the exposure. As you can tell in our scopes, it is very underexposed, okay? Like our shadows are almost clipping, if you can look at this, okay? We're sitting at a max around 512. So we're going to need to brighten it up a little. And this was where primaries come in handy. So we're going to go ahead and just balance out our image a little. What you do with one, you do with the other. Just play around until you get the right feel of what you're needing. I'm going to probably bring this up to like 89. We're going to keep this around 89 and we're going to make this plus nine. And we're just going to balance out the image. It looks like we're running into the green a little. So I'm just going to pull this back in our gamma to balance out the skin tones a little. And I'm just looking right here in our vector scope. Let me bring that up a little bit more. So, and you could tell that there is a lot, a lot of noise inside this image. Black magics tend to have a lot of noise in their image. Right about there. That looks all right. You're going to see this. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my display qualifier is focused. Now, this, this tool here is very, very handy to have. We're going to go ahead and our qualifier. Now, look, look what is happening right here, okay? It's showing us where our skin tones and everything is lying on our scopes. All right, so we're going to go over into LUTs. Right here on the left-hand side, you're going to see a little LUT page. DaVinci Resolve's uh, LUTs here is called Film Looks. Now you have options, like tons of options. You have Fujifilm and Kodak 2383. The difference on these is that you'll see like a DCP, DCI P3, which is made for theater. And then you'll also see Rec. 709 version now rec 709 is made for you know social media it's made for broadcasts okay um we're gonna go ahead and do the kodak d60 so right off the bat when we put this on here what does it look like it looks like crap and the reasoning behind this is because we're in a rec 709 gamma 2.4 but wait this lut is a rec 709 lut so why is this so heavy a lot of people would go in here and they would uh, go into your sizing and just bring this down to like a 50 to or a 0.5 to decrease the value of the contrast. But let me tell you, this is a wrong way to go. Okay. I'm going to show you guys how to properly do this. The reason why that this is showing the way it's showing is because these LUTs are made for Rec. 709, but it's made for the Cineon film log. So we got to convert the footage again, okay? Now, we're not going to need anything on the tail end of this. Why? Because this is already set at Rec. 709. So we're going to go into our CST right here, and we're going to go to the output gamma right here, okay? And we're going to click on Cine Auto Film. Now, look what happens. Boom. You don't need to run with these key outputs or anything like that, you just have to convert it into the proper color space, okay? Now already, I mean, we're, we're seeing the textures build from the film log. I mean, this looks incredible. In order to see off and on, you're gonna press Option and D if you're on a Mac. So this is before, this is just straight from the camera. I mean, look what it's doing, it's beautiful, okay? So, Let's go ahead and intensify it even further. 
Look at this, though. Look at our skin tones. It's just lined up perfectly on our skin indicator line. If you guys don't have the indicator line on your vector scope, go right here to your settings and click show skin tone indicator, okay? All right. So we're gonna create a little look for this. And yeah, it's gonna be a little noisy and it's gonna have digital noise. Um, I'm kind of curious, because I don't mess with the free version that much. If we can create, I wonder if it includes film grain. Unfortunately, film grain doesn't happen. Okay, so we know our limitations. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're just going to create a subtle teal and orange look. I'm happy with this. So we're going to create one node before that. And we're going to name this uh, shadow. Because I want the clean blocks, you know, we got this dingy teal that's happening. And we're going to correct it. And you can actually see the teal happening right here. Look at this. The red is clipping. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into log. Your log primary is right over here, okay? And we're just going to lift the red up till we get some clean. There we go. See what it did? It took out all that dinge from the suit and brought out the skin tones a little bit more. We're going to... Maybe bring in a little bit more on the green side. And we're going to come in here. I'm gonna, I might end up just creating one more. Sorry, guys. And we're going to do an adjustment. Okay. So on our adjustment layer, I just want a little bit more contrast, not too much. And I want to bring down some of the highlights as well. So I'm going to bring this down just a little. I'm going to create a point right here. So this is where my skin tone is lying. So everything I touch before them is not going to affect. Nothing's going to affect my skin tones. Okay. I'm just creating some subtle contrast to the image. That looks good. We're going to come into our primary wheels and we're going to bring down our blues just a little bit to get more yellow, yellowish green tones out of it. And we're going to click on our yellow and we're just going to bring it up a little just to get more of that teal orange vibe. That's a little too much. Okay. Okay. All right, so that looks okay. That looks good. That's, that's passable. I mean, look at this. We went from here to here in the free version. We could down these highlights a little bit, and that's why I had this node here. And what we'll do is we'll just go to HDR, and we'll bring this down to like a negative 30-ish. And that way, you can see what's happening to our brights, our highlights. It's just bring them down ever so slightly. Okay, so what did we do here today? We went into the free version and we created a Kodak 2383 look, okay? What we ended up doing is that we ended up using eight nodes to create this look. Our first node, we ended up converting it into Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 and wanted to use the 2383, but we had to convert it into a Rec. 709 Cineon film log, right? Then we can we applied our Kodak 2383 LUT, okay? Now, we go back into our corrector. Our corrector is our balance, our exposure, what we're really trying to go after for everything. Next, we ended up creating a subtle look. We corrected it with the shadows and you know, got the, the suit back into where it was supposed to be. And we did a slight adjustment to really uh, make it stand out. Now, we ended up doing one last node, and that was highlights. Okay? And that just brought everything down. 
Now, yes, there is a there is a little noise happening here, and there is a plugin. I don't think I have it on here yet, but there is a plugin that you can use because I just downloaded the free version. I normally use the studio, and I have it on my studio version. Um, it's called Neat Video, and I'll show you guys that real quick. Um, let's go into Google. I think it's... So this plugin here, Neat Video, it does the same thing as any noise reduction will do. The only downfall about Neat Video is that it is very GPU heavy. So if you don't have a good system, uh, I would try to stay clear of using it, you know, until you're done with all your color correction, color grading, and then apply it. That just goes with any noise reduction. Everything is just very heavy on GPU power. This thing here is a powerhouse. It's a workhorse. It will slow down your system. And where you're gonna place it is before your conversion. So if you're working on red or whatever, you're gonna have to convert it into DaVinci Wide Gamut or whatever color space you're working with. So you're gonna create one more node right here before everything. And we're gonna go in R, which is noise reduction. And then you'll add your noise reduction right here. Now, what you do is that you're at the counter it because noise reduction does take away the detail. It does take away the sharpness. So what we're gonna do is right before our CST here, we're gonna add one more node and we're gonna go uh, sharpening. Now, on the sharpening node, we'll go ahead and close this. You'll see this little thing right here. This is your sharpening. And you don't need too much of it, okay? I mean, look what it does when you try to, yeah, that's very stylized. All you really need is to bring it down to like 47, 46. And that's the max I've ever done it. And it just adds the detail back that's been taken away from the noise reduction. And it just brings out the image a little bit better, I would say. There, there's a lot of things that you can do with this, okay? And I mean, you can go as far as not even doing a teal and orange. You can literally go ham and create more of this sickly vibe going on by just bringing more into the green right here with your game. And actually, I really like that. So, <laughs> see what it's doing. Uh, yeah. So, we got a little bit more teal happening in our shadows, which we could correct. We can go back in here to our log and just pump out a little bit more just to correct it a little bit. Now look at our vector scope, guys. Okay. We went from this to this and we're still within the parameters and it's not breaking, not clipping. Okay. So that's how you achieve the film look inside DaVinci Resolve. The free version still gives you more than enough to create a stunning film look. In fact, working with these limitations can push you to be even more creative and it helps you find new ways to achieve the look you want with the tools that you have available. So there you have it a straightforward way to create that beautiful film look using the free version of DaVinci Resolve. And as always guys, be sure to press that like button, subscribe to our channel, click that bell notification icon for future videos, and as always, practice and create.